In this quick video, we'll talk about the concepts of scanning electron microscope or ACM. So scanning electron microscope or ACM is an important microscopy technique that is used to obtain high resolution images and detailed surface topology information of a sample. Now it's a type of microscopy that uses focused beam of electron instead of light to scan the surface of a specimen. It could be a biological as well as non-biological sample as well. What is the resolving power of ACM? So the resolution power of ACM is quite high and it is in the range of less than a nanometer to several nanometers. Remember the resolution limit of a light microscope is about 200 nanometer classically. Why ACM has a better resolving power than a normal light microscope? That is something we have to understand. The light microscope limit of resolution D is provided as 0.6 lambda by Na or N sine alpha. So this is the resolution formula. Now let's say there is a microscope which has, uh, which is operating at a objective of 60x. So roughly the Na would be 1.2 to 1.4. Here we are just putting 1.2. So roughly the limit of resolution at lambda 400 would be 200 nanometer that simply means if two points are 200 nanometer apart one can resolve that using this microscope if they are closer than this distance nothing can be resolved but in case of acm the lambda of electron is much lesser and this is a function of the accelerating voltage that we provide greater the voltage lesser is the wavelength now if we can just get a quick idea about the lambda lambda after putting all the values that we shown here and putting uh, v equal to one particular uh, ev we can see the lambda is about 1.2 nanometer so you can understand if the lambda is smaller the resolution would be much better right so this is why the scanning electron microscope has much much better resolution compared to a light microscope so now let's look at the optical components so this is how it look like pretty much like a tube inverted tube and it's basically a vacuum chamber where the entire microscope lens electron gun and etc are placed so first you would see the electron gun which is the source of the electrons for ACM and the TEM similar kinds of electron guns are provided if you want more details about electron gun watch the video on TEM so it would generate the electron beam that would go through the uh, several lens array so there are a couple of condenser lenses here the first condenser lens the spray aperture eventually the second condenser lens eventually they would they would pass through a deflection coil this deflection coil help in the raster or means like scanning the topo uh, surface topology of a specimen here are the objective lenses in yellow all of these lenses are actually electromagnetic lenses if somebody want to accelerate electron they have to use the electromagnetic lenses right that is how the electron beam could be focused on a narrow volume on the specimen surface and it can be rastered on a specimen surface in a, de a desired area this is the sample it's mounted on a particular chamber which can be tilted into different rotation to get the optimal plane and these are something called backscatter electron detector these are secondary electron detector and these are x-ray detector so these are three types of electron that are generated when the electron beam is basically interacting with the sample and all of these has information regarding the specimen topology so three most important component is first the electron gun which produce the electrons then the electromagnetic lens array which has the condenser and the objective lens which is useful for focusing the beam third is the scanning coils which move the beam over the sample and the fourth is the detector that captured the emitted electrons or emitted signals and creates the image so if we really summarize the working principle of uh, ACM, the three important component was electron beam generator or electron beam. Then basically the scanning modality, which is done by the electromagnetic coils and the, and the objective lenses. And last thing is the interaction with the specimen, which can be detected by several kinds of detectors, secondary electron detectors and backscattered electron detectors, etc. Now, depending upon the voltage of the electron, 
so the acceleration voltage of the electron, the volume of imaging image and the penetration depth would vary. So here you can see if the uh, vol accelerating voltage of the electron is 15 kV, then the penetration depth is about 6 micron, whereas it is becoming 0.5 micron if the uh, accelerating voltage becomes 5 kV. So lesser the accelerating voltage, lesser is the penetration. So simply we can understand higher voltage increases the penetration depth but reduces surface resolution. Lower voltage improves the surface details and it gives a shallower penetration. So both are true but the thing is it really matters what we are trying to image and based on that we have to apply the acceleration voltage in this particular microscope. Now let's talk about the type of electrons that are generated. First type of electron is secondary electrons. That is basically generated when the electron beam is literally kicking out uh, electrons from the outer orbit of particular uh, sample. So these secondary electrons could be detected by secondary electron detectors. Then there are backscattered electrons. So these backscattered electrons are those electrons which uh, penetrate an atom but eventually gets uh, elastic scattering and eventually move in the backward direction. So these are backscattered electron. They offer information about composition um, and they have other, they, uh, by, by changing or collecting the backscattered uh, electrons, we can literally have more contrast in that image. Also there are X-rays that are used for elemental analysis with energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, but this is beyond the dis uh, 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 beyond the scope of this particular small video. Now, every sample that has to be put under the ACM, every biological sample, because we are biologists, right, has to be coated because mostly biological sam samples are non-conductive. That's why it has to be coated with, let's say, osmium tetroxide, gold, platinum, or even carbon uh, thin layer of that. So sputter coating equipment like this is used where a coating happens in a vacuum chamber. Now other than that there are special uh, fixation and dehydration uh, paradigm that has to be done. Special fixative agents such as Buin's fixative agent has to be used for example in, in case of uh, ACM. There are certain advantages and disadvantages. Obviously, ACM is best if you want to look at the surface topology. But you want to look at inner cellular details, organelles, etc. ACM is not the key. In that case, TEM is the key. It can analyze a wide range of materials, ranging from biological materials to metals to polymers, etc. So that is why it's, it has a versatile uh, usage in the field of nanomaterials, biology, and also condensed matter physics. But it has several disadvantages. First is it cannot uh, image a viable cell. It can only image a cell after it is fixed, it has died and it is processed in a tons and tons of way. Okay. Another thing is like only surface de uh, details are visible, not suitable for investigating fine changes in the internal structures. Again, it, it requires a costly and fancy equipment with a lot of like technical skills. So these are kind of like a downside of these equipments. But anyway, be it biology or be it other disciplines, ACM is a wonderful instrument to look at surface topology. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Get more notes and flashcards in our Facebook and Instagram page. Also in our course page, you can find all the links in the description. And please support our channel using Super Thanks, which is a hardship icon with a dollar in it. You can click on it and pay using PayPal, Paytm or UPI. You can also directly scan this UPI to pay us. If you're an Indian viewer, you can also support us using Patreon. See you in the next video.